What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with more Uno X here on PCM 2021. Of course, the Tour de France has started in real life, which does mean the series as well as the pro cyclist have taken a little step back. I do apologize for that, but of course I am going to try and keep a few episodes going kind of every week with the pro cyclist as well over the Tour de France. So again, apologies for that, but we do have some very exciting races today. And that is because we head to Turkey for the presidential cycling tour of Turkey before heading to the Ardennes Classic. So some big, big races for us in the World Tour, probably some of the biggest races we are going to race this season in the Ardennes. Before that though, the Tour of Turkey should be a fun one. We do have a very short stage to start, just 70k, shorter one as well. The first three or four stages even are for the sprinters. Then we have the big GT day, the big mountain climb on stage five and a hilly one to finish on stage six. Looking to our lineup briefly as well, we really are going to focus on the sprint stages here. We don't really have a GC leader um, and Christopher Halvorsen is the man we are going to be working for. Away we go then here in Turkey and glancing briefly to the start list, I've already noticed we do have a certain Tadej Pogacar here in Turkey. So uh, yeah, we're definitely not going to win the GC. He's probably going to be contesting for the sprints as well. We have Woods, Roglic, Banal, Bookman. Oh my word, we have an absurd start list here. So right now we have moved into the final 5k here of stage one. We have Lobato here, Malicelli as well with a dedicated lead out for those guys. Only 3k to go now, so Hulgar can pull over. Here comes Nicholas Larson, Hal Vorsen being placed right to the front here by the boys. Larson with a great, great lead out right now. It's been such a short stage today. Everyone has so much power left here. Into the final two kilometers. Wrestle trying to lead out Christopher Hal Vorsen into this final kilometer. What a lead out this is. Can Chris Hal Vorsen finish it off? It's going to be pretty tight here. No, it's not. Chris Halvorsen wins with ease here in Turkey. What a start to the race. And here we have Halvorsen in the beautiful leader's jersey. You love to see it. Similar situation again today then. There we have Halvorsen in the blue leader's jersey looking very nice. And we're just going to try and control for another sprint finish where it seems Halvorsen is the quickest here. Okay, so we head into the final 5k yet again. We do have Burgos to our right this time. Halvorsen doesn't really have a lead out man either for the moment. Larsen has got caught suddenly so far behind and so has Wrestle here. Oh my word, what am I going to do? I'm going to try and take the wheel of Ben Swift. That is what I'm going to try and do. So we do now have Halvorsen to the front, but on the wheel of the Ineos Grenadiers rider. Very, very risky strategy right now. Who should we follow? Malicelli has gone. So has Ben Swift. But here comes Chris Halvorsen going to the line. Can we make a comeback? And it's a messy sprint train and it's going to really cost us here. Gone too late as well. Swift did take it. We're going to only end up fourth place. What happens to our train? But luckily, we will be taking a quick break after that disappointing performance in Turkey. We go to Paris Camembert, where we have the likes of Kosnafara, Quinton Hermans, Julio Ciccone, Ethan Hayes, a really nice lineup for this race. But for us, Rasmus Tilla, probably our leader. We'll see how the form is, though. Well, guys, I can tell you our question has been answered because we do get Jonas Abrahamson on a plus five day here. Tiller as well on a good day, but I do think it would be a good idea to try and join the day's breakaway just to take the pressure off the team a little bit early on. And Jimmy Johansson is our man able to join the breakaway. Nicola Bonifacio is here. And Yakovsky as well, who's a good sprinter from Poland. We do have a fairly good group up the road, to be fair, for this quality of race. Not a world's oil race, of course, but I'm really really interested to see Jonas Abrahamson on that massive day. Oh man, but for us, we get two fools here and Scarset is going to withdraw from this race. Oh boy, that is not idea. I've used his gel. That's going to be of no help right here. And Rasmus Tiller as well. Let's drop some riders to help out Rasmus Tiller here. What's a nightmare for us early on. So I can tell you guys, I'm still trying to get Rasmus Tiller back into the group. Ethan Hayter has punctured as well though, so Ineos can now help us out. And this really is putting Abrahamson clearly in that leader role. We have a number of World Tour teams really opening up this race early on as we cross the finish line uh, for, of course, not the final time here, but Johansson doesn't really have a big gap now in this break when it does seem they're not really working as we have a few attacks. So we may as well, I think, sit up here with Johansson. Despite this good day for Abrahamson, he is struggling, guys, let me tell you, just to stay with these guys when they accelerate on these hills. And we need to be very aware now we are coming to the business end of this race. Tiller is gone after that ill-timed puncture, really. Oh, my word. And now we have a split as well to the front. Oh, boy. Look at this climb we have coming up, guys. Luckily, I've spotted it ahead of time. Really, really menacing-looking climb. And I have managed to get right to the front of this race now. Johansson may be gone 
by the top though, so that is not ideal here. We're just trying to stay in position. I might try and follow any attacks because we are not going to win this race in a sprint. Really poor sprint stat, even on the plus five. Oh, and here we go. Here we go. Quinton Hermans tries to launch one over the top. I have tried to get into the Belgian man's wheel, and we have managed to join him up the road with Giulio Ciccone. How will these guys react now? Cosnafar having to work, and we are up the road here with two of the pre-race favourites now. Now Jonathan Narvaez trying to attack across. I don't think this move is going to work, sadly, but I think we may as well continue trying to press on. Here comes Chimalai as well. Let's try and jump in his wheel. Very good rider, of course, and now we're coming into a major, major ascent. Let's go up to 99 with Abrahamson. Can we stay to the front of this race? Look at the punch on some of these riders around us, though. We're going to have to just try and stay here, and we're doing just that for now. Really nice race. Can we even try a little move right here with Abrahamson away from the group up to 85 we have 12k to go and some riders now trying to bridge so we have Madawas and Jeffrey Soup trying to bridge across a group of nine riders further back and then 21 to be honest these gaps are oh my words oh my words I, I don't believe what I've just witnessed. So we're now right at the back of the group following that puncture right there. We have Prades trying to attack now. And this could be a sprint here. So we just need to try and get to the front of this race, I think. And we can still compete for a position. But that is so unlucky. So three Ks go. I think it's going to be very difficult to claim any type of position after losing all of that row position, actually. We're going to try and follow, though, a tier vault. So he's in a good place right now. Cosnafar, one of the favourites. So is Chikone. Let's get in his wheel into this final climb. So we just don't have the energy, sadly, to really contest this sprint at all. Would have been a really fun finish to this race. But instead, it is going to be Ethan Hayter just ahead of Benoit Cosnefra. Great ride by him. And we had a great ride as well, but I feel like we've been so, so unlucky here. Can't lie, that was an awesome race. Really, really would love to go back to Parry, Camembert next season. Cosnefra and Hayter are the two top riders. Abrahamson, though, it was unlucky number 13 for him today. Anyway, we swing now back to Turkey and we do have three riders up the road already. We do have an interesting parkour. We do have a fairly difficult climb right here. 6.7k at 7.7%. I wonder if anyone gets dropped. Otherwise, it's going to be a mass sprint. And so we now are approaching the final 6k. Anderson can stop. And I do think Hulgaard can go straight up to maybe 95 at this stage. His flat rating is so strong. It is going to affect the riders behind him today. Wrestle and Halvor. And we don't really want to reduce their sprint if we don't have to and we're right at the front already so this should be okay for now. Hal Vorsen has Vatra on his wheel, Ben Swift as well. Yes again we now have 3k to go. What's a ride by Hulgaard there on a plus five day for him. Larsen into the final kilometre trying to go late here because Hal Vorsen not on a great day and here he comes into the final 800 meters or so. Here goes Hal Vorsen going for the line. It's going to be close and I don't think it's going to be a win. It's only going to be second place here with Hal Vorsen. Oh, we probably should have taken that. I went too late in the sprint for sure. So the final pure sprint stage is really here. And sadly, Halvorsen gets a minus two. That is a real, real shame. I'm a bit disappointed with how we've done so far. One win out of three. Two out of four, I'll be a lot happier. But if we miss out again, considering who is here, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. I do believe this is the most pathetic KOM I've ever seen. Honestly, guys, look at this climb. It's called Mountain Prime. Average of 1.9%. But now we enter the final 6K. This is where we really need to make our good position count again. It is Ida Anderson right on the front for us and putting us just perfectly for the rest of the guys to do their job. Can we do it though? Here comes Hulgar. We have Molinar here who could sprint for Burgos. Roglic is here as well. I haven't seen much of him so far. But Hal Vorsen looking good with three... K to go. We need to be careful with these little hills here. And again, probably need to go quite late with Hal Vorsen on this minus two day for him. Here we go. Larson sprinting into the final 1800 meters. Now wrestle into the final K. Here goes Hal Vorsen. Try and get a little bit of a jump this time. Oh my word. It's a terrible block and we are nowhere near going to win it. Nowhere near. And Malicelli takes it. It's really disappointing yet again from us in the sprints. I felt like the lead out was good, but uh, yeah, Helvorsen ran out of room in that final kilometer and we don't hold the lead of the race anymore. That goes to Matteo Malicelli. So we're down to second in the GC. That's not really going to matter though, because we have the big mountain finish today and look 
at this Grand Sword quality start list we have here in Turkey. So I'm actually going to try something. I'm going to see if they're going to allow Ida Anderson into the breakaway. He was so strong earlier in the season. Um, it was at the copy of Barcelona, wasn't it? Where we had that unreal stage there. Hopefully they let him go and it seems they're going to. So I'm going to now try and attack with Christopher Halvorsen who can try and pick up some uh, some sprinting points as well. And you know what? I will try and take these points with Anderson. We should be able to do that. There you go. We do take that KOM. I wonder if it's too late to try and go for it. And you know what? Sadly, Halvorsen isn't actually going to be strong enough to join that group and take any points. So Anderson will take the next KOM as well. And that does put us second in this competition. If we take this climb coming up, we do jump into the lead as well. Okay, and we are having attacks now from the main peloton. We have Bidard joining us, and he is going to be a tough wheel to follow right now for Anderson. Look at that. The AG2R man is super, super strong. The rest of the breakaway, pretty done as well. Can we hold his wheel? This is so tough now. So three kids go. Anderson is digging deep. Stork is gone. He is a good climber as well. Bidard is flying up this mountain right here. He wants the points, or he wants something at least but what a ride this has been by Ida Anderson we come into the final kilometer we'll move up ahead of Bidard he's going for it as well Bidard is trying to beat us to this KOM Anderson fights hard he really fights hard what a win that is and that should give us the lead in the KOM jersey Guys, I'm pumped with that. I don't know if you can tell. So, of course, the riders we have here aren't really going to be able to follow this Ineos train at the front of the race. Let's see who wins, though. Will it be Bernal, Pogaccia, or Roglic, or someone else even? Here we go. The pre-mods attack comes. Woods and Pogaccia are the only riders who can follow. And Pogaccia is going to go by his compatriot as well. Look at that from Tade. What an attack. Roglic cannot respond to it. Bernal trying to bridge up. What a win it is going to be for Tade Pogaccia here in Turkey, beating Bernal. Now, then Roglic, then we have Mike Woods. Really, really selective climb in the end then. Sepkus further back. Obviously, we didn't come to this race to try and win the GC, but we do hold the points and the KOM jersey by very slim margins indeed. So I think our goal, hold those jerseys on the final stage. And so I have joined the breakaway here early on with two Delco riders and Marco Brenner, actually the young talent. Of course, a Timo Barbianchi legend as well, but our big moment is coming up at this third cat climb. And behind, we do have Salmon trying to join us. He's second in this KOM jersey, and that surely means Brenner isn't going to be working. No, he isn't working in this group up the road. What an interesting dynamic here. And I tried riding, but now Salmon has joined us. Hopefully we can beat him at the KOM. I can't lie, I'd be a lot more scared if it was Brenner in this position, but it is Salmon, 57 mountain, 65 hill, poor sprint stat as well. I feel like if I just set up rhythm early on on this climb, I'm not sure he'll be able to follow completely. So let's do that right now. Can Salmon come round? He is our only competitor. Now we have 900 meters left. We may as well try and go for this with Anderson. Can anyone come round? Big attack right here. Salmon doesn't have anything left. And we're actually not going to take the win, are we? I think we were second there. 23 points. So we did take first place. Salmon did come back and did actually take a single point to be fair to him. And to be fair to Marco Brenner, he has done so much work here, but I think this breakaway will be caught, which is good for us because Salmon then can't overhaul us at that final climb. And Salmon even tried an attack right here. I am just going to stay glued to his wheel. Oh boy, and look at this. Warbass attacks and Salmon tries to follow. My, oh my. Anderson doesn't have too much left here. There is Salmon. Can I attack him? He looks pretty done to me. Let's try and drop this man right here. He tries to follow me though. Not quite sure how to play this and there he goes he is gone so we should have the KOM jersey all but wrapped up here let's make sure Halvorsen can hold on on this climb as well and Larry Warbass actually has a fair lead right now Halvorsen is just about clinging on to this group and he should have a good chance if he can so we now have just five k to go I need to go right now I've tried to wait for Halvorsen to move up he's struggling to get to the wheel though if not we're going with Blickred today but we now need to go 95 probably with Hulgard Halvorsen I don't think is going to be leading us right here I've tried to wait he's not quite going to get to our wheel though here goes Nicholas Larson right now 2k to go we have Wrestle and Blickrit as well Halvorsen trying to get here and he is you know he is getting here into the final kilometer can Halvorsen take a surprise win here any of our guys even Wrestle is coming it's going to be Bernal Pogacar and Roglic on a sprint stage I don't believe it we wouldn't have won anyway but that is absurd so we failed to get another stage win but points jersey kom jersey both in the bag 
right here by slim margins still have Orson does it so does Ida Anderson pretty cool to see Martin Salmon as well really trying to attack us and go for that KOM but Anderson too strong for him on this occasion so I say with a stage win as well on stage one it was I would say that's a pretty successful race oh no oh no but literally just following this race I have seen an email who got injured it's a grazed elbow Oh my word, thank God for that. Surely he should be okay for the Arden Classics. And to be fair, it's Daniel Hallgaard anyway, not Marcus. Oh, panic over. But now guys, we make it to the big parts of the episode because we have made it to the Arden Classics. Amstel Gold is first, of course, not actually parts of the Arden, but uh, yeah, still nonetheless, a really big race for the team today. Alaphilippe just happens to be the favorite supercharged start list as well let's get into it and i have brought our a team to the race of course but rasmus tiller and marcus hooligar both get minus two days the rest of our squad looking good though so i'm not quite sure who our leader is right now i will though try and join the breakaway of course try and show the jersey off in a big race and so anders garcet does make it into the breakaway only a couple riders here four in total and yeah, it's not really going anywhere, let's be real. But at least we have the jersey, like I said, at the front. So we are some way into the Amstel Gold race right now. We are seeing some attacks. Oh my word, what am I witnessing right here? Caleb Ewan is attacking at the Amstel Gold race. Madaras is here. Latour, Benut as well. So we do have some very good riders now trying to bridge. Only 65k to go though. And this race really hasn't exploded with that Caleb Ewan attack though, it does seem to be in the process of doing that. Okay, so we are approaching the Volkenberg yet again. And I am thinking of trying something here with Henskul Madsen. Of course, we do have Scarset at the front of the race. If I can bridge to him with another rider, then this becomes a very good move for us. But it's really, really difficult to bridge this gap. As you can see, oh boy, the tempo is so high right now in all groups. And I think... We're going to have to drop back here. So I did drop back with Henskul Madsen. That wasn't a good move, at least. He wasn't strong enough to pull it off. Anyway, Scar Sets and a few other guys, Latour, Madawas as well, trying to catch T.S. Benut. Still, we have 40k to go. And these guys are just sat on my wheel. Latour, Madawas, and Caleb Ewan are going to be dropped here by Anders Scar Sets. And we are going to bridge to T.S. Benut at the front of the race. Love to see that, actually, by Anders Scar Set. Can't really work too hard with you. Yes, I'm afraid he is pretty done as well. And here we have the uh, Edith Schelling Le Pelson. So the Volkenberg comes again this time. It's Michael Matthews, Aaron Brew, Alaphilippe, Pogaccia on the attack. And look at that move. Oh my words. Can I even get close to following that? Not really right now. Those four riders have gone. Paddy Bevin trying to catch them. We are just about still clinging on to this group though. We have 14 riders here. If that is the case, we need to tempo really hard. Now to 25 riders at the front of this race. So Jonas Fingergold is here. He's trying to follow a move by Benoit Kosnafra, Ida Schelling, Matej Mohoric, Julian Alaphilippe trying to attack as well. Let's jump in the world champion's wheel here in our first season with Uno X. But here we go. Ida Schelling and Matej Mohoric have gone up the road. I'm going to sit in. It's not really down to me to chase. I'll try and follow some moves with these guys. And Torsten Train is going to be our leader at this edition of the race. Oh boy, Benoit Kosnafra, what a move by him. I cannot follow these guys' acceleration. So here we are, the final ascent of the Volkenberg. There goes Alaphilippe Torsten Train doing his best to get close to following the world champion. I'm going to try something here. Or oh, I'm not, I'm not. We've still got Pogaccio. We've still got Aaron Buru in this group. Torsten Train, just try and follow him, my man. That is all you need to do. Follow these attacks by these big riders and look at his energy, but we're still here. However, we are approaching the final climbs of the day right now. Aaron Buru doing great work for us and only Matej Mohoric is left out front here. Giacone on the move. I can't really follow that. Can't really follow that with Torsten Train will instead get in the wheel of Tade Pagaccia and Train just needs to try and recover. But Matej Mohoric, 10 to go. He is looking okay right now, I must say, because no real cohesion behind is now Vandrame on the attack and we're in the right wheel on Tade Pogaccia. So look at some of the names in this group. Quieto, former world champions, current world champions as well. I'm trying to follow the best of them. 8k to go. Matej Mohoric is slowly being reeled in, but we have a little ascent to come and I'm not really feeling up to it, I must say, with Torsten Train. Here we go, Mark Hershey, Mike Woods. I'm dropping back through the group, just trying to conserve some energy, but I think this is where... Torsten Train says goodbye to the front of the Amstel Gold Race. It's been a really, really strong performance by him. Come on, Train. Hold on to this group. 
hold on to this group. You can see Alaphilippe and Pogaccia. Those guys have gone. We're not good enough to follow those guys, but we are just about still here in the second group. Those guys at the front now have a massive lead. It is going to be Alaphilippe versus Pogaccia. Interesting sprint right here because obviously Pogaccia did beat Alaphilippe at Liège, Baston Liège in real life. 1k to go in this following group behind Torsten Train. Don't really have anything left, so we'll just try and follow the wheels right here. Up front, it is going to be Alaphilippe winning this time ahead of Tade Pogaccia, who had nothing left for that sprint. And for us, it's going to be a good showing here, but sadly, not really a good placing. We're going to be well outside the top 10. Real shame. We deserved a little more, I feel. In the end, then, we only end with a 20th position with Torsten Train. We just didn't have anything left for that final. But again, I think that is a really solid effort finishing with all of these class riders. And hopefully that is a sign of things to come and hopefully we can get a real result out of this one. La Flesh Wallon, of course, ending on the Murderhoy. Massive, massive final climb. So steep in the end. Valverde, Roglic and no Alaphilippe here, which is very interesting to me. And so La Flesh does get underway. We get some decent race days this time. Hulagard is going to be our leader. Clearly our best rider and on a plus three day. Can I join the breakaway? I'm not sure. And the answer to that question is going to be yes. Abrahamson does join the breakaway. Pretty strong one again. Brent Van Meur, who was so close to winning that stage. Won by Mark Cavendish at the Tour de France. He's up there as well, which can only help the group get further away from the peloton. Boy, oh boy, we have riders all over the race right now. Not any riders. Primoz Roglic, Giulio Ciccone is behind. This has suddenly been a super selective race. And so I have put a few guys of ours to the front here. Our guys in the breakaway have been caught as well, or Abrahamson, who was in that breakaway. And hopefully Hulagard is strong enough to cling on. We have 42 riders at the front on the race that always it's decided only on the final climb. This is crazy. Okay, and we've now had some moves from some favorites as well. We don't really have much firepower left either. Mark Hershey, Alejandro Valverde, I think a five-time winner or something of this race, maybe even more than that. We do have Bennett now working for Roglic, who has made his way back in. What a comeback this would be for Primoz. And so I must say, we do have some big work to do here. It's not really our duty to close this gap, and I'm not sure whether we should try to either, but the gap to Hershey and Valverde is pretty huge already. Molima is done right now. Now we have Latour, Higuita, uh, a few other riders as well attacking Roglic too. And Hulagard is almost by himself. He's going to need to try and stay with these guys at this stage of the race as Torsten Train is now done. We're here with Kosnafra, Roglic, but they're not really working again. So I must say, I can't recall seeing such an interesting addition of La Flesh well on. I can see Guillaume Martin trying to ramp up an attack. Same with David Godzio. I'll try and follow him actually, uh, the Frenchman. Very punchy, strong rider. Rider, so we'll get in his wheel here. Who can remain in this group? Only nine riders from what I can tell. We need to sit up though and rest in this descent alongside Roglic, Fusan, Kosnafra and David Godzu. What a group we find ourselves in here. So Hershey has now dropped Alejandro Valverde. Roglic is blocking us in as well. And there he goes. There he goes. Primoz Roglic has gone and I have attempted to follow him with Marcus Hulagard. Is this a sensible move? It wouldn't seem so at this point in time as Roglic is firing away, but we do have a big lead to those guys behind. Okay, yeah, yeah, that wasn't a, uh, a good idea. Primoz, he was dropped early on. I thought he was out of it. Doesn't seem he's going to be. He is going to fly up to Mark Hershey's wheel. And I think those two are going to fight out La Flesh Wallon. And we are all in for this move right now. We need to try and stay ahead of that group behind. So we're negotiating the final corners of this course. And sadly, guys, I don't think we are going to hold on for this P3. We are still ahead of that group behind, but we are pretty cooked right now. And what a ride by Roglic. He's trying to catch Hershey. And I think... Primoz Roglic is going to make the comeback of all comebacks here at La Flesh well on. We are not going to win this race, but Primoz Roglic was an addition of La Flesh. This was here, guys. I must say, Hershey, will he hold on for second? He will, but now we'll sprint home for third. 
and we will maybe be in the top 15 this time with Marcus Hulgaard. I think so. It's a fair showing by us again. We were ambitious with our race tactics. Probably the wrong move, but why not give it a go? We're going to be 14th place here, just ahead of Gregor Mulberger. What can I say? I went all in for that podium. In the end, we ended 14th. Probably could have got top 10 if I stayed in the group behind. Not to be, though, still Marcus Hulgaard. Very solid performance here. But this is the one we have been building to, guys. Liège, Baston Liège, the old lady of the cycling calendar, of course. We have the same team building up for this race as well. Hopefully some good race days and hopefully we can maybe push into the top 10. That'll be a sublime result for us here. So it's a wet old lady today. Jonas Widerberg is going to try and join the breakaway for us early on though. And it seems Abrahamson and Hulagard are the MVPs for us this classic season. Big race days again. And early on we've had a crash and Wout van Aert has crashed and he's going to be out of the race. Just 5k or so into... Liege, Baston, Liege. Wout wow, van Aert is going to withdraw from the race. Boy, oh boy, that is a race changer already. However, we will have a rider in the breakaway. The man is Jonas Widerberg. We do have Phil Gilbert allowed into the breakaway here. I did not expect to see that Andre Greipel as well. Boy, oh boy, this is a, a strange race already. So we've had about 250k and I was about to say this race is about to get going and it certainly is with the likes of Remco Evenepoel trying attacks already before the real climbing really begins. Boy, oh boy, he didn't get away but Hanau and Nierlands have managed to get away briefly. He's trying again, you know, and Remco has this time bridged the main pack. This is the ramp code we love to see, guys. Liège, Baston Liège, 87k to go. He is gone. And this has just opened the race up massively. We have UAE and uh, Jumbo Visma really working hard. Remco has literally caught and passed the breakaway with utter ease right now. Can Widerberg join him? I think it's too late for that. Remco has gone. Oh, my word. And now Abrahamson falls. Abrahamson falls. He was our, our second leader probably on the day. But a plus four day, always a shame to lose a rider of that quality for sure. Can he catch back up? To be fair, no, he's gone, he's gone. He's uh, too far back, I think. Riders like Peter Sagan getting caught out as well. Abrahamson trying to make his way back up to the front. We do have a race on right now, and I am so excited to see how Remp go, how long he can hold on. Can he go to the end? To be fair to Abrahamson, showing his strength today, he has managed to come back and he still has the second most energy on the team. What a ride from him. So for now, we're Uno X. We have to remember that I'm not going to try and be too aggressive like I was in the previous race at the flesh. Uh, Miguel Angel Lopez now upping the tempo. But I'm not really going to try and take control of this race. I'm just going to try and sit in and try and go for a really good top 10 result. Okay, so we have another climb. Remco's lead now down below a minute. And we do have some big moves. Here goes Primoz Roglic. This time it is pivotal that I try to react with all our guys. And I think Remco is about to be caught. He's holding on for now. And we are doing a pretty good job, to be fair, of staying in this group. As I say that, though, you do see Primoz Roglic has gone again, trying to attack up to a lone leader. This is literally a replay of La Flesh right now. And he has caught Remco and going straight past him. And that is, of course, going to send the 44 rider peloton we have left into pure panic. Um, and to be honest, they only have 13 seconds. I think we can catch them. There you go. Remco and Primoz back in the main group. Have they gone too early here? Must say, Hulagard is looking pretty good. And so we enter the Cote de la Lara Dutes right at the front of the race. At least that is what I'm trying to do here with Marcus Hulagard. We're not the most punchy. We have 76 hill on the day. So I need to come right to the front here. Set a real rhythm. Try to deter the likes of Primoz Roglic from attacking again and try and drop some riders as well. And this is really working for us here. This time it's Alejandro Valverde who launches an attack. Pierre Latour and Mark Hershey, the only riders that can follow straight away. Here comes Roglic. Let's maybe try and follow him right now. 25 in the chasing group. Here goes Shackman. Here goes Roglic. They're trying to bridge to that front group here. And to be honest, Hulagard isn't looking great at this stage of the race. Abrahamson though, still here to try and protect him. What a ride by him after uh, that mechanical he had earlier in the race. And now we have more riders up front. Going to be more difficult to catch them now. However, luckily for us up front, they're looking at each other quite heavily until Pierre Latour tries an attack right there. So uh, we're in a pretty good place here. 20 seconds behind and we're coming to the final climb. Here we go then. Here we go. The Cote de la Roche-Ofocorns, the final climb of Liège. 
Passed on the edge. Hulagar trying to grind his way up this climb. Let's go up to 95. There is the lead of the race. It's Mark Hershey. Can we try a little dig here with Marcus Hulagar? Try and bridge up to them. Try and drop some riders as well from our group. And we're looking pretty good here. Try a little kick over the top as well. We're going to catch Maxi Shackman at least, if nothing else here. Uh, we have the likes of Barze, Quinton Hermans, and that is really all on our wheel right here. And can we even get to the front here? Mark Hershey attacks Latour, who's having a great race here. Roglic and Valverde still behind. Hulagar trying to cling on. And we're in the top 10 right now, I must say. And we're back to the front of the race, but Hershey kicks again. And I can't really follow this time. Let's go 99. Try our best to just cling on to the front. Seems Roglic is done as well um, as he blocks us off a little bit. I can't lie to you. But to be honest, I think I'm going to sit in right now on these guys' wheel. I can't really chase. Up front, we do have Hershey, Bala, Quinton, Hermans, and Roman Barze, who are going to challenge for Liège, Baston Liège. We are going to get top 10. Could we even get top 5, though, with Marcus Hulagard? And this could be our last chance to try and bridge to those guys at the front of the race. Do I have anything left? Not really. I'm going to have to sit in as uh, Wieter Pools comes back. So Quinton Hermans has been dropped at the last. What a shame for him. Barde, Hershey and Alejandro Valverde will fight out Liège, Baston Liège this season. Hulagard, one of the better sprinters in the group, I must say. So uh, hopefully a top five could be on the cards here for Uno X at Liège, Baston Liège. So I'm going to come to the front a little early. Try and sprint right now with Hulagard up front. Hershey goes for it, and Hershey is going to win Liège, Baston Liège. Behind, though, where are we going to finish? Can we get a top five here with Marcus Hulagard? It's going to be sixth, is it? Roglic is going to be fourth, and it is going to be Hermans. We're going to be sixth or seventh place with Hulagard. It's a really great race for us here, though, in one of the biggest races in the world. Well, guys, I think we can be very happy with our performance here at Liège. A top 10, almost a top 5. Fighting it out in the end with Primoz Roglic, Benoit Cosner for our riders like that. Barde, Valverde, Mark Hershey. They're a different level to us right now. We shouldn't be disheartened in losing to them at all. In a top 10, like I said, we can be delighted. And looking at the rankings, it's actually Tade Pogacar, top of Super Prestige right now. Chris Halvorsen is our top rider right there. And in, uh, in the team rankings, we are 11th place, still fighting for a top 10, really amidst those World Tour teams. This has been a great season. And looking at the calendar, I'm not sure exactly when we'll come back for. I'm going to skip a couple of these races. Not sure exactly when we'll be coming back. If you have any specific races you want me to ride, definitely let me know down below. I may even try and get to the national championships in the next episode. Um, and we should have some transfers as well. So that is very exciting indeed. I have noticed here we have Halvorsen with some growth 77 acceleration on the man right now his sprint stat could do with improving still but uh yeah Chris Halvorsen the flying Norwegian for us our best sprinter by far clearly being rewarded for his good form so far this year with some growth but guys if you have enjoyed today's episode make sure you smash that like button down below tell me what you thought in the comments below drop a sub if you're new and I will see you guys in the next one